Welcome back. Chapter 5, Identifying Entrepreneurial Opportunity. This week, your business draft idea is due in Brightspace. You can submit it in the assignment area at any time. Um, it is uh, basically a Word document. I need about a paragraph just telling me the problem you've identified, the company you'd like to start to solve it, and a 30,000 foot view of how it's going to work. Uh, you can be detailed if you need slightly more than a paragraph, but I'm definitely not looking for more than a page. I just uh, want to kick off building your business plan for the business you have in mind. So we're moving away from the discussions and towards more one-on-one -on -one meetings between yourself and me. Um, yourself and I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, grammar was never my strong suit. But um, uh, we're going to start... Uh, be on the lookout for some links to some Teams uh, signups. You're going to have some one-on-one -on -one virtual discussions with me so we can work your way through your businesses. So back to Chapter 5. Again, this does not replace the reading. It's just some highlights that I'd like to go over um, to broaden your knowledge on entrepreneurship. Seeping all the way down to theories of opportunity, uh, Joseph Schumpeter is a German economist, um, well known mostly for a term he coined called creative destruction. Creative sounds good, destruction sounds bad. No, but if you're creatively destroying something, you are the inventor of the iPhone who creatively destroyed the flip phone. That was creative destruction. So Schumpeter is one of the thought leaders in terms of innovation. Um, this is a picture circa 1910. So I mean, he's kind of back in the day, but still a term you should know. Um, most of you guys know what I'm talking about when we talk about supply and demand. Supply is the amount of a product or service produced. Demand is the consumer or user desire for those outputs, how much they want. So you obviously want to create a company for something that there is actually demand for. Um, there's no point in creating an excess supply of something that people don't want. Um, demand may be for something that they don't know exists yet. Um, for example, everyone has pretty much a smartphone now, but those didn't exist once upon a time, but they came along and creatively destroyed, as Sean Pater would have said. Um, the smartphone creatively destroyed the, well, dumb phone, the uh, foldable phone, the, you know, cheap phone. Um, so we keep talking about creative and innovation, and we were talking about this um, last uh, class about being, or last week about being uh, creative. One thing I would really encourage you to do if you're on social media is follow fellow entrepreneurs. Um, Sarah Blakely and then honestly her husband, Jesse Itzler, um, are very creative um, and good followers on social media. They're just, they seem like a nice family to begin with. Jesse Itzler, um, I-Z-T-L-E-R, and then Sarah Blakely, as you see uh, posted here, or uh, on the screen here. Um, she formed Spanx which is an undergarment company that basically doesn't show a line um, of, of undergarments. So uh, definitely check her out. Um, there's Ed uh, Milet. Oh my goodness, so many entrepreneurs. Jocko Willenick, I love following. He's just an inspirational leader type guy, but boy, is he an entrepreneur as well. Um, you can follow the people from Shark Tank. Man, you got all kinds of types of stuff. Get on social media and follow some of these people. You'll get some great ideas. And they'll tell their stories about where they started and how they got to where they were and their failures and everything. It's really encouraging. Uh, so be sure to read about them. Drivers of opportunities. Um, things like, hey, um, social media created like a whole new, new, new marketing opportunity in terms of... Uh, online presence. Um, you have technological advancements that can really change how we do things, moving from you know the, the eight track to the cassette tape to the CD to now the MP3. I mean, you just the, things are changing constantly in the economy. If you're paying attention, you can reach the entire world. Globalization was with, was with, is within the, your fingertips, your, your phone. You can do business in China right now with your phone. Um, most of you are just hanging out on TikTok and they're just stealing all of your information. By the way, TikTok just sold to Oracle and Walmart of all things. Um, take a look again. There's CEOs they keep mentioning here. I want you to find these people on social media and follow them. Okay. Um, so what are we looking to do? Well, we're trying to come up with potential business opportunities. Hopefully at this point you have something in mind and you need to start screening it. You need to see if it's feasible. You need to uh, identify, you know, what are, how am I going to get data for this? How can I justify that my cookie business or my car wash or my whatever has enough demand to say, you know, 
let's just say convince Dr. Kiesler that your business plan is realistic. Um, start thinking about that types of data. Who are going to be your target customers? How many of them are there? Um, how often will they need their service? That type of thing. So you just need to verify that your your business is going to legitimately be, you know, well, viable. Um, so you're, you're screening the opportunity. Um, you'll likely begin again with secondary research. This is data that you can basically pull off the web. Um, data that you, that's already been collected that you just need to find. Um, eventually, I'm going to want to see you come up with at least some form of primary research, which is data that does not yet exist. That's something that you go out with a questionnaire or a secret shopper or a focus group. I want new data. So if you're trying to open a bakery, I want you to be a mystery shopper in another bakery and tell me what works and what doesn't work. And then I want you to turn around and say, hey, here's my idea. Present it to a potential customer and have them give you feedback. That's focus group. Um, so I need to see both. I mean, obviously, you're going to start out with secondary research, and then I want to see some primary research as well by the end of this class. <laughs> I need to see significant market demand. What's that market look like? Is it just Spartanburg County? Is it the state of South Carolina? Is it the East Coast? Is it Spartanburg and Cherokee County? What is it? Is it a Girl Scout troop? What's going on here? Tell me how many people and what you're trying to do. Um, basically what we're looking for is something with, um, significant market demand, significant market structure and size, something, it doesn't have to exist yet, but just convince me that you could pull it off and significant margin and resources. Can you make money doing this with enough customers and sustain it over time? All right. Keeping our tour along. <clears throat> There's some stuff I really want to get to down here. Just give me a second. Um, Elon Musk, everybody knows I have a man crush on that guy, SpaceX, you know, NASA's like dropping these rockets in the ocean, they just sink to the bottom. Yeah, he just lands them back on the pad. Everybody tells him he's crazy. Yeah, he just keeps doing it. Fourth billion dollar business? Is that right? Fourth? Have mercy. Read about him, follow him on social media. Um, here's some 10 reasons why small businesses fail. And these are, these are things I'm going to be critical on, on your business plan moving forward. Low sales. You just don't have enough sales. Lack of experience. You have all the heart in the world, but you're just missing like a key, key thing. How are you going to make up for that experience? Are you going to bring someone else in? Are you going to gain the experience in the, in the interim? What's your timeline for that? Insufficient capital. Biggest tripping point for most businesses is they don't have enough money up front to start up. So it's kind of like chicken and the egg. Um, I know some of y'all need like a piece of equipment to get a, get a business going. And if you don't have that piece of equipment, you can't get your business going, but you also need money to get that piece of equipment. So it's kind of a catch 22. How are you going to overcome that? Um, are you going to save over time? What's your timeline for that type of thing? Poor location. I am big on the mobile business, on the virtual business, because you can be in any location at any point. I'm not saying your business has to be mobile. It'd be kind of hard to have, you know, like a, a mobile fitness center, although that'd be pretty cool. Uh, maybe you can get like an 18-wheeler or something. But um, poor inventory management. How are you going to manage your inventory? Are you going to buy a bunch of, if you're having a closing shop, are you going to buy a bunch of stock to start with? Or are you going to buy a little bit? Or are you going to, how are you going to figure out what you need to buy on day one? I need to know that. Uh, careful about overinvestment in fixed assets. Things like, you know, hey, I'm going to pay 18 months rent straight up front and then have no money left over. That got to be careful with that. Uh, what if you're not in business in 18 days? What are you going to do with the next 17 months? Um, poor credit arrangement management. So, man, so many people have to borrow money to start. And if you have crap credit right now, obviously I'm not going to check your credit in this class. But you need to know from realistic terms, if you have bad credit, you need to figure out a plan to get out of the bad credit situation and start improving your credit score so eventually you can grow your business. That's just how the world works, man. All right. Um, scrolling back. Got to be careful. These things go pretty fast. Uh, another reason why businesses fail, personal use of business funds. Uh, yeah, you start paying yourself a salary. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, you need to plan on not paying yourself for the first year. Let that sink in. You need to plan to not pay yourself for the first year. First year. Anything above that's gravy. All right, so some of y'all don't have enough money saved up because sometimes you just can't pay yourself and then you got bills to pay. So you need to have some savings. You need to have, be able to borrow. You need to be able to do some things, okay? Uh, you ever see people at the mall where they open and like, you know, two weeks later they're closed? Yeah, they didn't really, they use personal use of business funds. They can't do that. Um, unexpected growth. 
uh, you have to be scalable. So if I mean, ideally, uh, your business crushes it and you can keep up with the new crushing demand. Um, some people are victims of their own success. They shoot out of the gate and do well and they can't keep up. They open a hamburger stand, but they can't make enough hamburgers to keep up with demand and people lose interest quickly and they move on. Competition, you got you to gotta survey your competitive landscape. Uh, those of you who have me in management, I think you can feel a SWOT analysis coming on. That's good because it is. So take a look at that list. Those are literally things I will judge your business plan on. I'm not trying to hide it from you. Uh, different economies, I'm going to let you read about that. We're in awesome shape in terms of a growing economy and opening a business here in the U.S. Tiny home community. Hmm. I need more room than that. Competitive analysis. You're going to need to be able to can, can do a uh, competitive analysis and in particular pay attention to the competitive analysis grid. Uh, this is an example of a bike shop. Strengths, weaknesses, um, commentary on the product quality, price point, location of the business promotion. That's a lot of the things we were talking about in that 10 list list of 10 things that can cause business to fail. Here's what I'm looking for. We are going to conduct, each and every one of you, a SWOT analysis of your proposed business. What are your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? This is what I was looking for, you beautiful thing. S is for strengths. W is for weaknesses. O is for opportunities. T is for threats. SWOT! Um, so, what are your strengths? Uh, well, you're getting some education and entrepreneurship. Hopefully, you have some experience in what you're trying to do. If you're not, how can you make that a strength? Because currently, that's a weakness then. And your professional network. Who do you know within this in this industry that can help you have an advantage? Uh, weaknesses would be things like, you know, there are disadvantages. Like, for example, if you have no experience opening, say, a firing range and you want to open a firing range, you might have a disadvantage. But you do have a ton of experience, say, shooting a rifle. Um, you may have a ton of experience baking but not a ton of experience marketing for a baking company that could be a weakness so what are your potential problem areas just be honest here man everybody wants to minimize their weaknesses i give the highest grades for people who have the longest list of weaknesses because if you identify your weaknesses you're aware of it and at least willing to admit it if you're willing to be aware of it and willing to admit it you're not going to ignore it you're going to tackle it then tell me how you're going to tackle it and i'm going to give you great scores uh, opportunities, technology, like what's your advantage? How are you going to work your business? Is there room for market growth? And what are the consumer needs? So if a consumer needs this, you're like in a town with no bagels and a consumer really wants bagels and you can give me that data and you're going to provide bagels, it's like, okay, right on, cool, no factor. All right, um, threats, what's your competition? What's your biggest threat? Is this a market that's going to shrink? Is this something that's going to be creatively destroyed down the line? Be realistic. Be realistic. Be thorough. So make sure you're doing a SWOT analysis. Pest analysis. Um, I'm bigger on the SWOT analysis. However, if you put a pest analysis in there, for certain companies, it's going to be very, very important that you do a pest analysis. Political, economic, societal, and technological. Political would be good things like government, tax, trade, labor laws. If you're going to open a business in downtown Spartanburg, which, hey, I'm all for opening businesses in downtown Spartanburg. I love it down there. But you have to be realize you're going to pay more tax. You're going to pay a higher sales tax. That goes under the P, under the best. Economic, what are your interest rates, growth, and inflation? Hey, I'm going to have to get a loan um, to run my car detailing business. Uh, hopefully, you have a good credit score, but what kind of interest rate are you going to get? Because that's going to factor over time. You have to pay back the balance plus interest. What's the economics of the situation? Um, what are the societal issues? Man, well, we're coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, I hope we're coming out of it. Um, there are a lot of health implications with a lot of businesses. How are you going to run in a pandemic? You're going to launch it in a pandemic. How? What about your business should make people more comfortable there than they are in other places? That's S, societal. Technology, um, how are you innovating? What's the research? What's the data that's backing up what you're doing? So um, three circles tour, tool. I love these. Um, you have your company, you have your customers, and you have your competitors. All right? So here are your offerings. Here, here, so here's your solution. Here's their problem. And here's their current choices. Okay? If you have a company that overlaps just with a competitor, there's not a whole lot that can be done. Okay? You're just the same thing that someone else does. If you have customers that interact just with your competitor, that's their market advantage. Okay? However, where it overlays, this sweet spot right here. Okay? Your company gets customers against the competitor, that is your value parity. 
that is where you can win. This is where your business will make money. Okay, But to do this, you have to do things like the SWOT analysis to understand your company. Your threat is your competition. You have to understand their company. You have to find this sweet spot right here. That's where you want to be. Copacetic? Cool. What is your competitive advantage? I want to let you read about that. The companies that crush it are the ones that take their competitive advantage and just build on it, build on it, build on it. Amazon, for example, let you read about that. Um, their, their competitive advantage now is their size, but their competitive advantage before was their convenience and their ability to send it straight to your house in a quick manner. All right. So they have built on that, being able to offer more and send things to your house more quickly. All right. I can literally order something on my phone right now while doing this podcast. I won't do it. And it could be in my house tomorrow. That's a competitive advantage for Amazon. I mean, at some point, people are like, ah, I'll just go to Walmart and pick it up. Have you been to Walmart lately? Nah. I'll just sit here and record lectures the next two days and just get it shipped to me. Competitive advantage. Amazon. Uh, social media. You guys are good at it. You guys are good at it. This is going to be one of the feathers in your cap. Um, social media in terms of being able to gather research, you can reach out to people on social media and get feedback on your business idea. And I will allow it in your business model. Um, we're going to be working on business models moving forward. There's going to be a lot more information there. Uh, what are you offering? Who are your customers? What is your financial viability? What are you going to charge? Okay. What are your costs in there? And what's your profit? All right. How are you going to run this business? How is it structured? These are the things I'm looking for you to do. So, Writing a customer value proposition, take a look at this. Folks are going to get bonus points this week if they turn in their business idea draft with a customer value proposition embedded within it. That means they listen to this video. Yeah, you know in Brightspace, I can tell who's listening and who's not, who's coming through these lectures. Hmm, you think I'm going to come back on that when participation rolls around? Because I'm spending time recording these jokers. Um... There are a lot of good sources for information. Um, if you recall, in the first week and in the lot, towards the last week, I give you a list of information. Um, two biggies, obviously, are the census um, for secondary data and also BLS, which is Bureau of Labor Statistics, bls.gov, um, Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. You can get a lot of good consu potential consumer data there and also from the census. But those are all secondary sources. Again, I'm going to be looking for some primary sources too. You want to do well in this course? Bring me some primary sources that, that justify what you're saying. Okay? Don't have a business in concrete right now where you're like, I'm going to do it this, I'm going to do it this way, and people are going to enjoy it. No. Have an idea for a business. That's why it's a business idea draft. And then go out and see what the market actually wants. And then you build your business upon that. That is how you make a successful business based on the market, not based on your head, okay? Be humble enough to realize you don't have all the answers. Go out there and find some potential answers to some, or go out there and find some potential problems and then propose some solutions. See what they're going to do with it. Bring that data back to me and let me give you an A in this class. That's all I want to do. Man, these good projects, they're so easy to grade. I just read over and was like, yep, that's right, no factor. Hundo at the top. It's the ones that are crap. That I got to go through and tell them why they're crap because people who do crap work always want to know why their work is crap. It's crap. And I got to write it up and that takes me longer and it makes me give you like a D in this class. I just want to give you an A, man. Just do what I ask. So, with that said, that actually, yep, pretty sure, yep, that finishes up the, uh, the old chapter. So, SWOT analysis, big, huge, okay. Find some entrepreneurs you respect. Follow them on social media. Get in there. Look at these 10 reasons why businesses fail. I'm going to be looking for those 10 reasons why your business might fail. Find the sweet spots. Okay. Find some people you want to follow. All right. Learn a little history here. Sean Pater is the man. And identify your entrepreneurial opportunity. Keesler 